Hello brothers and welcome to the Team Queester video training series. This video is going to go over our budget builder template which is an Excel file that you can use as a Queester to build a functioning budget for your chapter. Before we get started I want to point out the highlighted area up here at the top of our instruction page. This lets us know that this template was built and intended for use by undergraduate chapters of the Sigma Chi fraternity. I also want to point out that as you go through this video or while you're using this template offline, if you have questions, please feel free to email us at teamqueester at gmail.com and we'll do our best to get back to you in a timely fashion and answer your questions. When you open up the template, which can be downloaded in two places, either at sigmachi.org backslash queester or you can find it on our team page, which is teamqueester.com at the bottom of the resource page, the first thing that should open up is the instruction page. Since we're going to be going through the functionality of the template, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this page. But you can see as I scroll down, this has step-by-step -step instructions on how to do the things we're about to get trained on. When we build our budget, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to the bottom of the sheet and we're going to click on the Asset Questionnaire. I want to point out at the top of the questionnaire, in this highlighted area, it tells us that only highlighted cells can be edited. That means that only the cells that have been highlighted can have data entered into them. The rest of the cells have data that we do not want to have change, or they have equations built into them that are calculating our budget correctly. So only highlighted cells can be edited. You'll also notice that there are two different colors of cells. The yellow cells that can be filled in are for items that we should be experiencing in almost every Sigma Chi chapter. The ones that are highlighted in orange are more subjective items like rent if you have a house that may not pertain to all chapters. So let's get started. Here I've already entered some data to save us a little bit of time because it's going to take us a little bit to get through these and explain them correctly. I've entered in my chapter name, my university, I put my name in as Queester, and the budget year. Once we get our budget date approval from our executive committee, we can type that in here. Under question one, we see how much our current chapter dues are. Some chapters charge differently for in-house and out-of-house brothers if they have a home, so we can put in the in-house and out-of-house dues amounts up here. Under question number two, we want to put in the number of active members we anticipate for the following two semesters. So here we have it broken down by fall and spring semester. It's further broken down each semester by out-of-house and in-house brothers. That way if we're charging two different amounts, which we've entered in up here, when it calculates the total amount that will be owed for dues, it takes those factors into account. It also has that for the spring semester. Some chapters allow brothers to pay early alumni or senior dues. Question number three gives us the opportunity to put in the number of brothers we anticipate to pay those dues and the amount in which we will charge them. Some chapters allow brothers who study abroad to pay a different amount as well for their dues. Here we would put in the number of brothers we anticipate are going to be studying abroad and the amount that they would owe. Question number five deals with the number of brothers that we anticipate paying first semester international dues for both fall semester and the spring. What that means is our structure right now is to have a first semester fee and a second semester fee following our initiation that goes directly to the international fraternity. So we enter in the number of brothers who are in their first semester active in the fall and their number of brothers that will be, have spring be their first semester active and our current fee for international dues is $100 per semester. Question number six deals with the number of brothers that are going to be paying the second semester international dues. So we put the number that we anticipate in fall and spring in these cells here, and that dues amount stays the same, $100. Under the current structure, once they pay the first and second semester dues, we no longer pay international fees to the general fraternity for that particular brother. Next we 
we'll have the number of brothers we anticipate that are going to be new members. Those new members can be added in by semester, spring and fall. Our current new member fee is $100. Under number eight, we put in the number of brothers we anticipate initiating for both the fall and spring semester. We enter those numbers here, and our current initiation fee is $200 per member. Number nine deals with chapter housing. For each semester, we put in the number of brothers that we anticipate are going to live in the house for both fall, spring, and summer for the chapters that allow brothers to live in the house over summer. We also have the opportunity to put in the rent amount for both fall and spring semesters and the summer has an entry field as well just in case that number is different than during the academic year. We can also put in the number of semesters that we consider part of those, a number of months I should say, that are part of those semesters. So here we've got the fall semester listed as five months, spring semester is five months, and summer is two. You may have brothers moving into the house who have to pay a housing deposit in their first semester living in the house. So you can put the number of brothers you anticipate for spring, fall, and summer in the amount of the housing deposit. There's also a house key deposit if your chapter charges that. If you charge a separate amount from rent for the brothers who live in the house for utilities, this is the area that you can enter in the separate utilities that they're going to owe. Under this model currently, I'm assuming that the rent amount covers the utilities for each month. If you charge a parlor fee for in-house or out-of-house brothers, you can add the number of brothers per semester here and the parlor fee that you anticipate charging them. Number 13 deals with out-of-house and in-house brothers as far as parking fees are concerned if you have parking fees at the house. For the chapters that have meal plans, we can put in the number of out-of-house and in-house brothers that plan to be on our meal plan for this fall and spring semester. And we have an opportunity to put in the amount of that meal plan as well that we're going to charge each member. If you charge separate social dues, you want to put in the number of brothers that will be charged those social dues by semester and the amount of the social dues here. Number 16 deals with the amount of bad debt that was previously written off that we anticipate collecting. What this means is certain brothers get written off as far as the amount of money that they owe to the chapter. If that happens and the brother has a change of heart and decides to pay, which we hope he does, this is where we would put that in. This is the amount that they pay us that has been previously written off. Some chapters may have copiers in their study rooms. They may have laundry rooms, vending machines, or other Similar income items, you can put those in by semester under number 17. That's the amount of income that you're going to make from them. Under number 18, we can put in the amount of income we anticipate from fines. If your chapter charges fines, either general fines, late fees, return payment fees, or any other special assessments you might have. Now under number 19, this is where we're going to be charging our insurance fee, which most of us know as RMF. Some chapters may charge by semester. Some chapters may charge one lump sum per brother per year. If you charge by semester, you put in the anticipated number of brothers per semester and the fee you plan to charge per semester. If you only charge this to the brothers one time per year, you may have to change this to enter in the number of brothers that you anticipate will be paying that fee during the year and you can change this amount to what the annual fee is. So that can be modified depending on how you charge for RMF. Although it's a small amount we want to record all of our income. Number 20 deals with our interest income that we might be making off our savings accounts or money markets. So that's the monthly interest income that we're collecting. Number, number 21, we want to include the income that we're going to have from philanthropy and fundraising events. You can see Derby Days here. We're anticipating a spring Derby Days in this model and collecting $15,000. We may have other philanthropies throughout the year that we're collecting money from. 
We may be getting alumni donations and any other fundraising efforts that we have. Number 22 I want to point out as the previous cash balances. This would be the balances that are in the bank account when you take over your term or whenever you start this budget template. So in this example I'm assuming that we're starting with $10,000 in our main checking. You want to make sure that you check those numbers and that you put in the actual amounts that you are starting with. If you have any of these other accounts, you can put in the starting balances for those as well. We're going to talk about that again when we talk about the actual budget template that this is going to produce for us, as well as our income statement. If you plan on collecting any professional fees, perhaps for consulting that's provided, not many chapters have that, but there's a couple that do, you can add in any type of professional fees that you're charging. If we have any other miscellaneous income, we can enter them under number 24. We may have active member donations. We might have to charge for brotherhood retreats, any additional educational programs. Here's a big one. Here's formal. I know you guys love your formal. We want to make sure that we're recording the number of people that are going to attend formal and how much their formal fee is. You can see over here that's not highlighted it's because it's being calculated automatically. You can either en enter this in as the number of couples that are coming and the fee per couple, or you could do this by individual and the amount per individual. We have non-philanthropic fundraising, any other miscellaneous income we might have, and the t-shirt income is going to be very similar to the formal income. We want to put in the number of t-shirts we anticipate selling and the price at which we're going to sell them for. Number 25 is any other unapplied income that you plan to have throughout the year. This basically encompasses any other income that haven't been covered by the questions above. Once we have all of those items answered, we can move on to our expense questionnaire, which I'll try and go through just a little bit faster. Same layout. You see these are not highlighted because they're automatically filled in from the asset questionnaire. Question number one deals with accounts receivable we do not anticipate collecting. This is basically our bad debt write-off. Hopefully we don't have any, but we want to be realistic. If we think there's going to be amounts we have to write off for uncollected, uncollectible dues, we want to put that in under fall semester and spring semester. That could also include rent. Record your estimated per month bank fees. A lot of banks still charge fees, particularly ones that have debit cards attached to them. You can put in the monthly fee here for those bank fees. You may have to return housing deposits to brothers who are moving out of the house. You can enter those in by semester here. That's the total amount you plan on giving back per semester. Number four is recording our estimated electronic transaction or banking fees. This is going to include any kind of credit card transaction fees we may have, particularly for our software, i.e. Greek Bill or LegFi, where people are able to pay money through their website and they're going to charge us percentage. I put in $2,500 per semester. That was based off the due structure used in this example at 2%. Under number five, we want to record the international new member and initiation fees that we have to pay to headquarters that we showed as income from members on the asset questionnaire. We actually now have to pay that back out to HQ. So for each semester, we put in the amount of brothers for each category. This is the international first semester for the fall, international first semester for the spring, number of brothers at the $100 fee, second semester fall, second semester spring for international and the fee. Here's our new members, our pledges for the fall, spring, and the fee. And here's the initiation member of brothers we're going to have for initiation for fall and spring and their fee as well. Some chapters give dues discounts if the dues are paid early or paid in full. Some chapters give discounts for good grades. 
or any other discounts that you have can be entered under number, number six. We want to record additional operating expenses we may have. In this example, we had in-house meal plans and out-of-house meal plans. This is the actual cost for those meal plans. And as it's noted over here, that includes kitchen staff wages in that category. We may have house improvements that we've anticipated to have to pay for. We also may have housing maintenance that we need to pay for. Under our income, we had miscellaneous income from vending. Here is what would cost to actually stock the vending machine, as an example, and any other operating expenses we might have. Under number eight, we're going to cover our IFC and Panhellenic dues. We want to put in the number of IFC members we have for fall and spring and the amount that they charge. Same thing for new members. Sometimes those are different as far as how much they charge. So there's a separate entry for them. Panhell's the same way. You have fall, spring, and their amount. Same for initiated members. Looks like I forgot to put those in. We may have donations to IFC and Panhell. We can put those in by semester as well. Under number nine, we want to record our estimated cost for liability insurance. Here we have our active number of members for both fall and spring. Our new members we have to pay liability insurance on as well. And here is our cost per member. This would be for RMF. Number 10 is our estimated cost for new member education programs. This does not include the McGeester budget. That's any other educational programs we may be putting on. And number 11, we do talk about the McGeester's budget. This is new member education, including P for B. We would put that budget amount there, how much we plan to spend on those programs. Number 12 gives us an opportunity to enter miscellaneous costs. I put in a weekly ritual session. If we have one of those and we want to buy refreshments for the brothers, pizza and soft drinks, we can put in the amount that we're going to spend for that session. You can see here it says item. That's because I have the opportunity to enter an item in that I want to put in. So if you have something specific you want to put in there, you can add that in here. As nonprofit organizations, we probably should not be paying any tax fees, but there is a spot to add fees for taxes if there's anything that we have to pay. We want to put in additional officer budgets. Under number 14, we have Consul, Proconsul, Annotator, Queester, and Custos. And then the other would be any other officers that have budgets that we need to add together and put in the total amount there. We may have professional fees such as accounting services that will enter in number 15. The accounting services is an example of a firm that helps us maintain our books. Tax services would be hiring a tax professional, a CPA, to file our year-end taxes for us, which is something that is a recommendation of Team Queester, that we have a certified professional fill out our taxes for us and submit them. You may have collection services. This does not include fees for online payments such as through Greek Phil or LegFi where they charge a percentage for the amounts that are paid online. This is for actually sending brothers to collections and having to pay collection fees for doing so. Under number 16 we have program expenses. You can see our chapter retreats. You can see here's our Derby Days donation amount, other philanthropy, Founders Day, homecoming, other programming, these are expenses that we want to make sure we get entered in that are going to be happening throughout the year. You can take any other programming and lump them all together and put them in at the bottom if need be. I broke out the recruitment expenses under number 17. Usually we're spending a fair amount on our recruitment efforts. and It's a little bit easier to track the expenses when it's broken out into multiple categories. So recruitment has been broken out specifically to help you track it. If you have a chapter house and you have to pay house, uh, pay rent to Housing Corps, 
Here you can enter in the number of months per semester and the amount of monthly rent that you're going to owe them for rent. Under number 19, you can put any estimated repairs or maintenance costs that you have for equipment and fixtures. Here I've got some examples, a lawnmower or furniture in the house. If you're saving up for future renovations to the house, you can put the amount that you would like to try and save per semester right here under number 19. Here, similar to the recruitment budget, we broke out the fall and spring semester social expenses, just a little bit easier to track that way when it's broken out. You can see formals lumped under there. And here we haven't finished filling this out. We can put in the monthly amount that we're going to owe for our utilities. In the example on our asset questionnaire, we weren't charging additional amounts for these utilities, but we still have to pay the bills. So we'll go ahead and enter those in. And once we're completed with that, we are ready to take a look at our full budget. So we're going to click on the budget template. And we're going to see that on the top, there, in the highlighted area, everything on this page is coming from either the asset questionnaire or the expense questionnaire. So there is no additional data that needs to be entered in on this page. It's all automatically calculated. So you'll notice at the top we've got our chapter name and university, Queester name, budget year, and approval date. On the left-hand side, we've got our income budget, totaling at the bottom there at $184,000. Pretty good-sized budget. On the right-hand side, we've got our expense budget, totaling out in 152,150. When we look at the highlighted area here, you can see that we've got our total income less our total expense, and we get an over under amount for our budget. You can see that our income is higher than our expenses. If those numbers were flip-flopped, if we had more expenses than we did income, this number here, the over under, would have a negative sign in front of it and it'll actually turn red so that we know we've over budgeted for ourselves and we need to go back and change the asset and expense entries to try and get the budget to balance out. I want to highlight something that I brought up earlier and that is our previous balance amount. This is the amount that we had in our bank accounts to start with. I want to highlight that because as we go to our income statement we're going to see that that number is included here in our assets on our budget page, which helps total out 184,000. When we go to our income page, it's not going to be there. So on our income page, we have our revenue, which is now 159,000 because we're not including that amount. And the reason for that is, is the income statement is going to show us what the actual operations for the year alone are. It's not going to take into account monies we have from past operations. So we're going to take a look at our revenue only for the year in which we are budgeting. We have our costs that are going to total here. The gross margin is the difference between our revenue and our costs. And we still have expenses to account for which total here. And you can see that our net income is in the black. If that was negative, it would be in the red, just as it would on the budget page. So what this is telling us is that the operations for our year are going to have a surplus of $7,000. So that's a good thing. That means our budget is going to work for the year. If this number turns out to be in the red, we know that we have to go back to our asset and our expense questionnaire and try and tweak our budget and get some of our costs or our operating expenses down to make sure that our budget isn't running in the negative. The final component to the budget builder is a bank register. Some chapters don't have anywhere to record the transactions that they have for their financial uh, accounts. So here we have an opportunity to enter in a opening balance. 
I've entered in $25,000, which is close to the money that we should be starting with in our example. And then we have the opportunity to enter in dates of transactions. If we write checks, we can put in check numbers. We want to make sure we put in a description who we wrote the check to. Write a memo. What is it for? This is for April rent 2017. The withdrawal amount. And you can see that the balance is being calculated for us. The $2,500 has been taken away from the $25,000 to equal $22,500. In the next example, we're going to count this as rental income for the month of April. And I put the last name of the brother who paid, which is me. And here's the amount that got deposited, $250, which gets added in. You can see we're still keeping our running balance. I put in one more example, a check written to our cable provider for the month of April. Here's the amount that it cost. And you can see it took it away from our balance, so we're keeping a running tally. The only other item on this is the reconciliation column. You can see there's X's in there. What we want to do at the end of the month is we want to take our financial institution statement, our bank statement, and we want to check the transactions on that statement to the transactions that we've added to our check register. At the end of the month, we match those up, and as long as we are able to find them, we want to check off that indeed they have been reconciled. Yes, we recorded the same thing that the bank did at the month end. So that is the Budget Builder Excel file that we have available to you. Again, as you go through this, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to email us at teamqueester at gmail.com. You can also get in contact with us through the website, teamqueester.com, in the contact page. You can send us an inquiry there. If you have questions, we will get back to you as soon as possible. We hope that this tool is beneficial for you, whether you're using the tool as your budgeting tool or if you're using it to calculate numbers that are going to go into your software system. Again, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out to us. Our job is to be here to help you in any way that we can. Thank you very much, brothers. Good luck.